just like to make sure that everybody that's here tonight is on the sign up sheet for our records. Um, this meeting is a public hearing for the town board regarding local law number one, 2017. Um, and we will basically open it up to the floor uh, for any discussion, uh, any comments uh, anyone in the audience may have regarding the uh, proposed law. Um, the board will hear from you uh, next Wednesday evening. We will reconvene at 5.30 for another public hearing. Okay, 5.30 to 6 o'clock. We'll have another public hearing at 6 o'clock. Uh, we will have a special meeting uh, for the town board to make more comments on. Well. How can it be a public hearing? Yeah, what time should, how can it be a public hearing? You, the law wasn't handed to you until after 9 o'clock last night. We, so we can have a public hearing on this. Not legally. It has to be on the it has to be on the board's desk for ten days. <coughs> no, it has to. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you this evening. I listened to you way more than enough last night. You know um, what? I'm not going to hear it tonight. It is an illegal um, meeting. It, this is not a. Well, that's fine. Hearing. Take take it to your attorney and have him. Address I already it. took it to Department of State today. Well, good, good. It's, we're, it's against we're, the law. We're happy that you're out there and working. The law was state. not even written when the public hearing notice was <clears throat> posted. Anybody have any comments? Yes, sir, Mr. Snow. <coughs> I would like to express my thanks to the planning board for the nice end problem that they came up with. And I, the second thing is I would urge the town board to accept that document as you have, as you have received it. I think that they've done a fine job. I encourage you to accept that. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Anybody else comments? Nope. Um, I'd also like to thank them and uh, John Barnum and the town board also with uh, information, but it's because we want it to be the most informed law we can get. There are some things we'd like to change later, but we realize that time is of the essence, and we're hoping you will keep it open uh, for other, you know, tweaking, as they say, and also that you will um, consider uh, working on the town, our land use and development plan, which time keeps uh, creeping up on us. We'd all like to just hang in there and do what we've always been doing, but uh, we're not allowed to do that. The world keeps uh, creeping up on us and uh, pushing us. So thank you for your work, and, uh, <coughs> and uh, but we, we unfortunately, I think we still have some work ahead of us. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I would like to talk, I was thinking, I spend too much time on my own, and I was thinking about, uh, <laughs> okay. where are you going with uh, uh, You think about this penalty phase. You guys got, a, you guys got a penalty of, what, 350 a week? Okay, why is that not per windmill? And they also, they make a sensor, or I don't know exactly what it's called, you can buy it for like $50 on Amazon, and with an uh, app and a smartphone, you can take this, uh, you can take um, measurements of the noise, decimal. decimal levels of the noise, and then if they took a picture of that, a sensor, a reading, once every 10 minutes, one minute for every 10 minutes, which is supposed to be, you know, the law, they're supposed to be not over for a 10 minute period. They can send a picture of that to you guys and just send a fine out because the state troopers can do that if you're speeding down the road. That way you wouldn't have somebody running the road all the time with a, you know, you wouldn't get called at two o'clock in the morning. People could do it on their own and then take about two thirds of that money and give it to the person that's being disturbed? <laughs> no, seriously. If you're, what's the sense in having any laws when you have a, if they're too noisy, you get a $350 fine a week, which is less than $19,000 a year. That's a joke for a, for a penalty. They're not even going to, they don't even have to adhere to anything. I'm sure it's definitely something we'll look into, Johnny, because... Okay. Uh, uh, um, 
chances are the state's going to want their portion of that, their $350 too, so it's going to be even less than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, then as, raise it up as, to 500 As, as uh, Luke mentioned, this is something that's going to be an ongoing process. Right. Um, the planning board, just because they've handed this uh, revised law over to the town board um, uh, to review and to uh, make a vote on next week, it uh, doesn't mean that we're done with this. Um, Luke made a very good point. Our entire um, uh, land use and development, um, several laws within the town need to be addressed, and the planning board has every intention of continuing on this. Lori? Um, I also would like to thank everyone who's worked so hard on the uh, wind law. I would also like to um, give you an, a new list. We now have over 700 signatures, and and it is continuing to grow. So I just wanted to let everybody know that this this is representing, you know, the work, the efforts that we've been trying to work with the, the town and the planning board. It's not just for a small group. It's for a large uh, contingent. Is, is, can I ask, are these signatures all residents of the town of Parishville? It's Parishville and Hopkins. Parishville and Hopkins. Right, because it's a one project, right? It's a Northridge project, so I didn't, uh, but I've got addresses. I didn't know if perhaps uh, communities outside of our area were also. There may be one or two that are outside, but I think the majority at least have um, property here. All the people on the pilot, opposed to the pilot, are residents or taxpayers. People requesting a moratorium may live in adjoining communities. But not a or, very or be small. people who will inherit property here, or have an interest in uh, work or um, enjoy recreating here. Is that a word, recreate? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. It's a new one. Sure, sounds good to me. <laughs> I don't know what sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can, I, can I just ask about the, uh, the set, I mean, it's probably really late in the process and I haven't been here and stuff, but um, this 2,500 feet setback, um, are, are, is everybody happy with that? Is that considered liberal, conservative? Um, how did you come up with that number? Um, we didn't come up with that number, the planning board did. Yeah, how do you um, think? And uh, actually, as we look at that, um, I believe there's still, I think it's page 18, language in there that suggests five times the height of yeah. the wind tower. Yeah. Um, one of the things I know that they were uh, taking into consideration uh, years ago when this the original wind law was developed, um, they were looking at towers that were probably around 300 feet high, I believe. Um, with the towers that are proposed now uh, for this project at 500 feet and hearing that there's other projects that are, are um, looking at towers under 600 feet, um, they took into consideration that there may be, need to be larger setbacks than originally determined. So the, two, two, the ones that are listed in this concurrent law are basically the ones for a 300 foot tower but then extrapolated for a 500? Correct. So, so are are those considered to be generous? I mean, are people who are within that distance of a 300-foot tower satisfied well, with that? Well, it's, it's to, the, to, to the side of the property. It's the yeah. property yeah. line. So it depends on where their house is on their property. Huh? So yeah. how far the windmill would be from their house would depend on how right. where their house is on their property. Right, if they were that close, right. Property yeah. Property line. Their line. Right, their line. Yeah. So it depends on how close they are to their property line. Like you and I, obviously, it's not going to make much of a difference. It's going to be like 10 feet more. Yeah. But it's really close. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so, so it can't be made farther back. We've been trying for six. We've been nine times. <laughs> well, that's what I wanted. You said your the community, the 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 concerned citizens started asking for a mile, and there's a. Uh, and that thing over there about other places. Um, if you direct your comments up yeah. here, it would be great. Side, yeah. table um, side conversations can go to the yeah. parking lot. On, on, on the right. side table is a list of other areas that have a one mile or more setback. And I hope people will pick it up. 
Um, to, to answer your question further, to um, when you're looking at that 2,500 feet or five times the height, um, we have to keep in mind that uh, the planning board had to keep in mind that they had to be reasonable too. Right? They, could, they couldn't throw a, a, a huge number out there and say this is what we want. You know, that, that's not even realistic um, for such a project as what's being proposed. If it's too burdensome, that's when Article 10 comes in, sits us down, and says, this is too burdensome, so what are you really going to live with? You know what I'm saying? So. They didn't do that with Cape Vincent. They agreed that their one-mile setback was a reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I just um, would like to say, you know, Avangrid displays an arrogant contempt for the wishes of the majority. And it's time for our town boards to stand behind us and rid ourselves of this travesty. You know, when you say that Article 10, you know, may sit you down and say, you know, this is, you know, this is too much. That's when it's, we've given you tons and tons of information. I believe that we can back it up. So I'm just asking, you know, the, I think the Wind Advisory Board did a great job. You know, you, you spent a lot of time and energy going into it, and, I, I, and I'm happy with what, what you put out, but now I think it's time for, you know, our towns to really, you know, stick up for us. The majority of people in both towns don't want them. And to say publicly, which I already have in Hopkinton, um, Mr. McDonald said to me at the open house that they want happy towns. And if the majority of people in the towns did not want the windmills, he said they would gladly leave. Wow. That's what Mr. McDonald said. Mean, he's never denied that conversation. So I'm just saying, you know, here here we are. We come meeting after meeting. Um, we have all of the sign things, and, and I'm just asking, you know, the board to, you know, really, really look at this. This really is a travesty. You know, you're, you're giving information from them. It's the same information over and over. I mean, you know, so just take a look at that. The information you get from them is the same information <coughs> over and over. The information that you get from the concerned citizens is from various, uh, you know, sources all over the world. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Hi again. I would like to thank the planning board <coughs> last night. Kim Moore did a great job of receiving so much information and trying to weed through it and do the best they could for for us and as well as knowing that we are going to need to look at this again in the future. Um, I just would like to, to bring up the 500 foot. I know there are different places where there's possible variances in the law. I know Ms. McDonald has stated at one of the previous planning board meetings that they aren't looking at going above 500 foot, but other projects um, from Iberdrola as well as other wind companies around have stated that at this part of the process and then go to the clause that they put in the PSS, which is in the PSS right now, that they will use the most current technology. So at the time of their application, if their most current technology is taller than that, um, they may say, well, we told you in the PSS we, we could go higher. So I just hope that the language, the way it's written in the law, that that's not something that can be varied, that the town has it at at 500 foot. Uh, also, with Article 10, um, please remember that the siting board, one, has never convened. They, well, other than the fact when they convened at, in 2011 to be sworn in. They have never, ever met for any official duties since then, and we're now in 2017. They themselves are not going through our law. Um, so as long as the town has backup and you have plenty of, of information that backs up the things that the planning board um, suggested, uh, then if the developer chooses to point something out and creates a, uh, a essentially like a hearing on that, then you have the backup for that. Your planning board got tons of information. You, you do have it. So uh, what's in the law, please don't be afraid that you're being too restrictive and if the siting board is going to be looking at it, because they're only looking at it as the developer has to, um, has to make basically a court case about a particular section. And also, please remember that right on their, their Facebook page, as well as in the PSS, 
they do state that with proper setbacks, there's not adverse health effects. So that means the inverse is true. Without proper setbacks, there are <coughs> adverse health effects. So please keep that in mind as you are reading through all this information. Thank you.